Come on, you gotta like try for that. We'd have some people that'd be a little angry at us. Yep, that's warm. Let's do it. The nice logo right there. The most annoying one to check is you're gonna have to dip your head all the way up. I don't have any muscle, so. A little heavier than the sling. A little bit. Let's go. Hey guys, Wayne from Sling Pilot Academy. I'm really pumped about this week's video. We're gonna do a pre-flight in one of our new Technum P2006Ts. Uh, Matthew and Andrew will take you through the whole checklist. Uh, stay tuned in following weeks for startup and run up in the Technum. Our Instagram has nearly hit 10,000 followers, so if you don't follow us on Instagram yet, please go ahead and do it. Enjoy the video. So to get things started for our pre-flight inspection, we're gonna start in the cabin. Um, before we actually start referencing the checklist, we're gonna run through all the switches and make sure everything's turned off, just kind of get the plane set in a clean state. So starting off, you wanna make sure the gear's down. That's the most important one. Um, <laughs> these ones here don't have squat switches. So if we would turn the master on and we had the gear switch up, the gear would start coming up. And yeah, then, that'd, you know, that'd be pretty bad. Yeah, we'd have some people that'd be a little angry at us. Next, we're gonna go to our control panel here, the pedestal in the middle, and make sure that all of our controls are where they need to be. So throttle idle, props full forward, and carb heat is off. From there, we can check all of our switches. So all of our electrical stuff here, making sure everything's turned off. Then we'll come up to the top. Up top is probably the second most important after the gear, is making sure all the ignition switches are turned off. If these were turned on, the engine would be considered hot because that would be allowing power to go to our CDIs, which power the spark plugs. So once we make sure everything's off, everything's clean, we can actually start pulling out our checklist. And we want to run through it, make sure, kind of follow what it has. So ignition switches are off, which we've confirmed. Parking brake is set, which we put on. Documents for the arrow, we saw them earlier down there at the bottom of the door down there. So we'll run through, double check that we have our error in this, our registration. We have a POH in the back seat and the weight and balance is also in the POH. So that's going to cover it for us. Emergency exit. So we have one emergency exit in the plane. It's going to be the center little kind of door hatch up here. So this little wire up here is just going to make sure it doesn't open on accident. You want to double check that it's there. The wire is set up so that if you need to open up the, the hatch in an emergency, it'll easily snap, but it has to be done by the force of a person. So we're going to make sure the wire's there, make sure that's all locked up and closed, which it is. Perfect. So from there, flight controls, which we already confirmed are in their normal position. So idle, forward, forward, that's all set. Um, let's see, so now we're gonna check and make sure our alternate static port is closed, which is gonna be right under my left leg here, and it is currently closed, so that's all good. Emergency gear control, so under your legs here in that little center panel down here, which we can rip off, there's gonna be all the emergency extension gear, or emergency extension for the landing gear, in the case we have a hydraulic failure, anything like that. We're gonna make sure all the switches are in their normal position, which is not on. So we'll double check by looking down there. You can see everything is off. Perfect. I do that for me, thank you. That's what this looks like. So gear selector down, again. Most important one, make sure that guy is down. So we're doing all this before we turn on any power, because again, we just want to make sure that we're not going to collapse the gear on us when we actually start you know, running things up. So from there, we can now put our master switch on. So when we turn it on, you're going to hear some noises from the back. Battery's getting started. Now that we got the master switch on, the first thing we're going to look at is going to be the, the three lights on our gear selector. We're gonna make sure that they're all green. Um, that's indicating that the gear is down and it's confirmed that it's locked in place. So now that we confirmed our gear is down, it's locked in place, we're gonna move over to our cross buses and avionics. So we're gonna get all of our screens fired up. We're gonna do that by putting on these switches here, cross bus, avionics. So these are just gonna be our electrical buses here. We're gonna get some more instrumentation fired up for us. From there, we're gonna check our fuel quantity. It's gonna be these two indicators here, about 26 gallons per, uh, per side. Um, so we're just gonna look at it now, it's about half full. Should be enough for a good little two hour lesson. Let's see, rudder trim. So we're gonna make sure our rudder trim is neutral just for the pre-flight, just to get kind of reset from the last flight. Rudder trim is controlled down here in between our legs. So you have a little switch for left and right. You can see down here. To see what the state of the rudder is, we're gonna look at this little indicator right here. It's gonna show us if it's left or right. All right, so the rudder trim is set neutral. From there, we're gonna check the pitot heat. If you would be so kind. Keto heat is on. Yep, that's warm. We checked the pitot heat up front. It is working, that's all good. Next for the flaps, we're gonna make sure we're going to set our flaps to down. So the full down position, just to test to make sure they can go down. And also it allows us to look at some of the bolts that uh, hold them on. So flap selector is gonna be here on my side. 
I'm just gonna hold it until we're getting a down indication. You see that little needles all the way down? As far down as it'll go. All right, so flaps are down. Next, we're gonna turn on all of our lights. So all the light switches are gonna be below my yoke over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip all the mod except for the last one over here, which is gonna be the, the inside instrumentation lights. So now that we got all the lights on, we're gonna go ahead and do a initial walk around. We're gonna make sure all the lights are functioning and we're also gonna go check our star warning. Let's do it. So first light that we're gonna check is gonna be our landing and taxi light, which are located on the left wing here. So we're gonna make sure both of these are functioning. From there, we're gonna go check our nav and strobe lights. So we're gonna make sure that we have our red nav light over here. We wanna make sure it's the red one, you know, have it right. <laughs> and our strobe light is working. So both of those lights are checked. We're gonna keep walking all the way to the rear. So we're just gonna double check up here that our rear nav light and strobe light's working. So it's hard to see on camera, but it is strobing. Coming over to the right wing, same thing. We're gonna check our nav light and strobe light. So we got the rear white, our strobe light's working, and we got our green nav light over here. All right, so now that we got all the lights checked, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the stall system or the stall indicator for the plane. So I'm gonna have you stand by the uh, door over there so we can hear it. The way we're gonna check is this little flap right here. I'm gonna flip it upwards and we should hear some beeping inside, so. See you there. So now that we got the lights checked, we're gonna head back inside, turn everything off, uh, get our hobs time, just the last few items, and we'll do our actual walk around. So now that we're back inside, first thing we're gonna do is grab our checklist and we're gonna kind of rerun through what we just checked. So we Sounds ended good. off with pitot heat. Mm -hmm. We did our flaps, we turned all the lights on and we checked them. Stall warning was checked. Elevator trim, we we're going to check. That's gonna be back inside. So just like we had our rudder trim down here, we have two uh, trims in the plane. There's a manual wheel and electric trim. So the manual wheel sits down here in between us. From me in the right seat, this is my main source of our trim. Uh, the wheel's connected straight to the stabilator in the back of the plane. So this is just changing it right now. Also on your side, on your yoke here, we have an electric trim. So you can go up and down, and you can actually hear it working when you turn it on uh, up and down. Indication is gonna be right above our rudder trim. It's gonna tell us nose up and nose down. So we're gonna go ahead and set it up so that it is wings or nose level, just like that. Thank you. Next thing we're gonna do is start shutting down, like I said, so avionics and cross buses we can turn off. Sounds good. And last master switch is off. So that's all checked. Last thing that I like to check before I walk outside is gonna be our backup battery and kind of our starter battery, mm -hmm. which is located down here in between us. Battery is somewhere else, but to actually test it to make sure you have enough power, you can simply just press down that button. As long as our needle ends up in the green right there, we have the power that we need. So now that we checked the battery, everything's all set. We followed our checklist, everything is off. We're good to hop out of the plane and start our exterior check. All right, let's do it. All right, so now that our cabin check's done, we're gonna move on to the actual exterior pre-flight. The way that I like to run this is kind of do a flow that I've developed after flying this plane for you know, 30 hours. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around, kind of check what I normally do, and then we'll come back and double check it against the checklist, make sure that we've done everything that we need to do. Sounds good. So starting out, the way that I like to do it is just starting off with our prop. First thing we wanna check is just the basic condition of it. So yep. we're gonna make sure there's no cracks, any major chips in either of the edges, whether it's the leading edge or the trailing one. Both look good. We're also gonna make sure that the actual prop spinner itself is secure and on. From there, I like to check our radiators. There's not much we can check with this engine. There's no cowlings that we can pop up. So we're kind of limited as to what we can look at, but we do want to check the condition of both of our radiators here. So we're gonna have oil on top. Want to make sure that everything is all spaced out. There's no FOD, any kind of bugs, anything like that there. Same thing with our coolant radiator. And finally, air intake down there. It's all cleaned. So always check those, make sure there's nothing blocking it. From there, I always do my basic walk along the leading edge of the aircraft. Want to double check that there's no major dents, nothing that was damaged from the flight before. Everything looks good there. So our light, we already checked it earlier. What I do like to always double check is that it is secure. I always just want to give it a little shake. So that one's obviously on. And same kind of thing, we're going to check our, we're going to check the condition of our winglet here. Make sure everything looks good. Got the nice logo right there. So double check that that's all good. Rolling on to the back side of the wing. We're gonna check all the bolts and connections for our ailerons and our flaps. So moving these up and down, double check everything's free, correct, no resistance to it. Also what you wanna check, up here for each of these hinges, there are these little safety pins. You wanna double check that the safety pin's actually in there that's holding on your hinge. So we got that outer one and we have our inner one here. Ailerons checked, there was no resistance to it, it was nice and free when we moved it. So next we're gonna check the flaps. The whole reason that we put the flaps down like we did when we started the interior pre-flight is so that we can hop under and check out the bolts right here. So we're gonna make sure that the torque seal is there, that the bolt looks fine, and that we can see threading. You wanna make sure you can see the actual threading and the torque seal itself. 
So that's on there. There's also two more that we need to check. This one back here, same kind of thing. So we're just gonna double check this one. We see threading, we have our seal on the other side. And finally, we have our most inboard one over here. Same thing, double checking that. So that's all good. So while we're under the engine, before we move on to the actual fuselage, we're gonna look up into the engine around our exhaust manifold here, and we're gonna look for coolant. So our coolant bottle's hidden up there. We just wanna visually check that we can see some reserve coolant up there. So that looks good. Now that we're down here, we're gonna check the condition of the landing gear. So first things first, we're gonna start with the actual tire itself. Just kind of your general stuff. We're gonna make sure that there's no balding, no uh, kind of in-depth scratches, make sure it has some good air pressure. Really, you can check it visually with these ones. So first thing you check is there. From there, we're gonna check the brake in the back here if you wanna come around. We're gonna check the brake caliper, making sure it's all in good condition, don't see any kind of hydraulic fluid leaking out. Make sure the brake discs all look good. So looking at our strut right here, gonna make sure that there looks like there's some good pressure in there, that the wheel's not sinking too low. Make sure that the plane's able to hold itself up. And then finally, the most annoying one to check is you're gonna have to dip your head all the way up and look up inside at a little butt switch that sits in here, a little micro sensor right there. So what that little guy does, it is responsible for indicating whether the gear is completely down or not. So you wanna make sure that that is connected and it's in place. If it's not, we will get incorrect uh, indications inside the plane. So from there, we'll now move on to the actual fuselage itself. Just walking alongside, kind of doing a normal condition check, looking for any weird dents, anything that looks like it was damaged from a previous flight. Look up top, got our ELT up there, all of our GPS, radio back here. Everything looks good. Now, one thing we do in the check over here is gonna be the actual landing gear hydraulic compartment. So what holds all the, or the hydraulic fluid that we use for the landing gear. There's a little window down here that we need to peek into. So double check in the window here, make sure we have at least 20 bars, which we got 40, so plenty right there. Back here is just a little uh, case to protect the batteries. So next we're gonna check our vertical stabilizer. Double check that again, no damage on the leading edge, anything like that. We got our two VOR antennas up there that are looking good. Side of it looks fine. And now the stabilator. So this is a big one to check right here. Kind of like we do with the ailerons, we're gonna do some full deflections on it, go all the way up, all the way down. We wanna make sure that there's no resistance that's moving free and correct. We're also gonna make sure that this guy here is moving with it. What this is gonna do is kind of help relieve some of the pressure because now that we're flying a really big buff plane, you know, this is gonna kind of help us have to use less muscle as we're pulling <laughs> up and down the stick because I don't have any muscle, so. A little, little heavier than the sling. Just a little bit. Next thing, again, we're gonna look at some more bolts inside. So back here on our rudder trim, we're gonna look inside these two crevices over here and we're gonna double check that we can see threading on these bolts, making sure that's fully secure. And same thing all the way down here at the bottom, making sure that everything looks like it's all secured and it's not gonna come off as we start up. All right, so now that the stabilator's done, we checked our rudder, we checked the rudder trim. We're gonna move on to the other side, the vertical stabilizer. Just double check that everything looks good on it, which still does. So now we're gonna check the right side of the fuselage. No windows or anything to check on this side. We're just gonna make sure again, no damage, everything looks clean, looks normal. We also have a static port down here that we wanna double check is cleared out, which looks good from over here. Now that we're back here on the right wing, we're kind of going to do the same flow that we did on the left, but reverse. So starting out, we're going to look at our landing gear down here on the right side. Same kind of system. We're going to check the state of the tire itself. Everything looks fine. There's no balding. There's plenty of tire pressure. Brake back here looks fine. There's no leaking. The caliper looks good. This looks good. And same thing with the strut. So we can see that there's some good pressure in there holding the plane up. And last but not least, our micro switch again. Double check that it is there. We already kind of checked the circuitry of it. We saw that it was green when we turned on the uh, avionics. So it is indicating that the gear is down and it is yeah, there. We're gonna look up at the engine again. So double checking, I mean, again, it's really limited to what you can see inside, but you're gonna look for the coolant tank in here. We're also just gonna check for anything that looks like there may be some oil leakage. Looks like we got our coolant, everything set up in there. Next, we're gonna go back to our flap. We're gonna start looking at all of our bolts and hinges again, looking for that thread lock. Got one, two, and finally over here at the end is our third. Then we'll come over to the aileron. Then we'll check we got this guy here. So our eye bolt there that holds it on. And we'll check our movement again. We're gonna do our full, free, no resistance, anything holding us back. And again up top, we're gonna look at all the hinges, make sure that we have those little pins up there that are holding it on. See, we got one and two there. So that looks good. Cool. We'll move on, check our little winglet. 
Again, now we're kind of coming back to the leading edge. We're looking for any damage. We're gonna shake our light here, make sure it's nice and secure, and look down the leading edge. Seeing no dents, nothing that looks too concerning. While we're walking along here, we can go ahead and take this tie down off. We're checking our leading edge here. Some air intakes, and we're coming back to the right engine. So, like we did on the left side, we're gonna check the condition of both the props themselves. They both look great, no chips, nice and new. And our prop spinner is fully attached. Also, we're gonna check our radiators here. I'm gonna flip this guy up. Check our radiators again. Oil radiator looks nice and clean. Same with the coolant and the air intake is clear, nothing blocking it. Now that we got the right wing done, we'll move on to the front of the plane, the nose. Couple items we're gonna check. So we got our two pitot tubes that we need to look at, but most importantly is gonna be the nose gear itself. So kind of walking along, looking for any damage along any of the windows, any windshield, any dents, anything that looks concerning. Pitot tube, we're gonna make sure that it is clear, nothing inside causing any blockage for us, so that one looks fine. We're gonna get down and we're gonna look up in the actual wheel well itself for the nose gear. Look for balding, tire pressure, it all looks good. So we'll look up in the wheel well, we're gonna make sure that nothing looks out of place, nothing looks, you know, snapped, anything like that, which it looks good up inside. And now, looking just from the nose of the plane, looking for anything that looks off, but perfectly symmetrical, everything looks good. And last, we will check our pitot tube here on the left side, make sure that one's all clear, nothing blocking it. So now that we checked the pitot tube on the left side, we've kind of completed our basic walk around. So before we go and double check on the checklist, we have two more things that we need to do for both engines. That is gonna be checking the oil and sumping a little bit of fuel. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab our sump from inside. We'll grab the ladder there and we'll get checking. We got our sump, our screwdriver, and we got our ladder. So to check the oil, we're gonna have to actually get on top and uh, look inside from the top of the engine. So before I do that, I'm just gonna move the prop out of the way here so it's easier for me to see in there. With the ladder, we're gonna hop up. We've got two screws to undo over on the flap here for the oil. And then peeking inside, it's the same oil tank that we have in the sling since the Rotax engine, but you'll take the cap off. Make sure you leave the cap in plain sight right there so you don't forget to put it back on after you start the engine. So now that we've got the cap off, we're gonna reach in and grab our dipstick out. This is gonna show us the level of the oil to make sure we have enough. It needs to be at least on the flat part of the stick, which it is in this case, so we have enough. Um, we don't need to burp it. If it was not, which often after running the engine, it's not gonna be on the flat part, We'll have to put it back in and actually turn the prop manually until the engine burps. So I'll go ahead and stick it back in, put the cap back on, give it a good twist and a good little shake just to make sure that's secure. It's not going to come off in flight. Finally, go ahead and close this back up. Give it a good little twist. Make sure it's nice and secure and the oil is checked. So that's all that we're going to have to check up here. We'll do the same thing for the right engine right now. All right, so now that we checked the oil, the last thing we're gonna do before we double check our checklist here is we're gonna sump some fuel. So for the engine, or for the fuel, we're gonna come to the back of the engine here. Looking up inside, we have a little fuel sump right here, a little drain. We'll pull it out. We're just gonna double check for no contaminants that are floating or sunken at the bottom, and we're gonna look for any water that might be in there, but this looks pretty clear. So we checked the left engine, we're gonna do the same with the right. Come up under here with our sump. Grab a good little bit of fuel, and we're looking for the same thing. Nothing floating around, no water in there. So this side's also good. All right, so now that we checked our oil, we checked our fuel, we're gonna run through our checklist and we're gonna make sure that we looked at every item that we have listed. So everything for the left side of the plane, we completed. We also did our gear pump, battery box, horizontal tail and trim tab, vertical tail and trim tab. Yeah, so then we also checked the right side here. So everything on the exterior check is complete. So now that we've double checked our work against the checklist, the pre-flight's complete and we're ready to go fly. Let's go. Did I say anything that messed with my standing with the company? So please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Really helps the channel, and we really appreciate it.
What's up, dudes and dudettes? <laughs> we'll cut that out, don't worry. I hope that the 360 captured that. Oh, look at this beauty. Ooh, Christian, guest appearance. What a hot man. It's like, doing weird shit while you started talking. Technum. What the f***? <laughs> I needed those. 